So uh, we know the fact from historical perspective, calcaneus fractures has been recognized as the most problematic um, fractures. And that's probably because of the irregular bony anatomy, joint mechanics, and soft tissue complications, which have, um, gives uh, the surgeons a nightmare. Numerous classification, surgical methods, and post-op regime. Usually, uh, there is no consensus for there yet, and its ma management has been a source of controversy. And, of course, the whole thing started, the debate started from this... Um, trial or this paper in BMJ which was in 2014 which mentioned that there was no difference between the outcome of um, operative versus non-operative and displays in articular fractures. That's a brief anatomy on calcaneum. We have three facets. It's a complex anatomy. We know that. But if you were to operate guys, then what I would suggest is you need to know the anatomy quite well, especially on the lateral side. You need to know where your sural nerve runs. Also, you need to know how the flap which you're going to elevate if you're doing an extensor lateral approach, how the lateral calcaneum branch of the peroneal artery comes, and that's why you would want to move your incision slightly more posterior than anterior. Now, I won't go through the whole details, but key thing is the important angles which you need, we need to know. The bolus angle, the angle between the articular margins versus the posterior tuberosity, that should be 20 to 40 degrees. Gissin's angle should be an obtuse angle. Understand, look at the axial views to see how do you check for the width of the calcaneum. Now, the other two things which you really need to look at is the height and the length of the calcaneum and the hind foot. That is very, very important. Another point of view is the Broden's uh, view, which is 10, 20 degrees and 30 degrees um, in, rotor, in the internal rotation. And I'll show that in how do you do that intra-op. So these are important things, Gissin's angle, um, look at the calcaneum length, how it is shortened on the first picture on the left. Then the bowler's angle, how again it is shortened, almost almost coming to only 5 to 10 degrees. And how the width of the calcaneum is increased. And the calcaneum tuberosity is in varus. Now when you're looking at a CT scan, and many times a lot of people send me the f scans of calcaneum fracture. And the only thing they send is a 3D recon. That's, it doesn't tell you anything. The key thing is to look is the coronal view at the maximum width of the talus. That is what determines what type of Sanders classification you have. Here in the center, you can see it's almost a Sanders 4. Again, on the right side, if you look at the sagittal view, you see how the, the calcaneum, the articular surface is completely rotated. Now, classification, I won't go through the whole in detail, but the key thing is to, dis is to distinguish between a joint depression type and a tongue tie because you want to decide if you want to do a non-operative and an operative and if it is operative it is a percutaneous open. I am sure everybody knows about this Sanders 1, 2, 3, 4 coronal view CT scan need to know that. Sanders 2 is where the fracture line is only uh, you have two pieces, 3's are three pieces and 4 is completely a comminuted type of fracture. Also, it's not always intra-articular. You have extra-articular fractures. Here you have on the left top, you have a tuberosity, a small medial process fracture. You can have something called as a body of the calcaneum fracture as well. Don't forget, if you have a, many times I've had patients who have had twisting injury of the ankle and there is an anterior process of the calcaneum fractures and if they are quite large, they may need fixing it. And sometimes you have an avulsion fracture of the EDB attachments. So the topic was when not to operate. Yes, it means as a surgeon, you want to know when to operate. When not to operate, usually people get it. But no, let's spend some time on when not to operate, especially determined by patient factors, especially patients with elderly with comorbidities, uncontrolled diabetes, chronic smoker or tobacco chewer, peripheral vascular disease where you can't feel the pulses, and neuropathy, peripheral neuropathy or organic bone disease you would want brain disease, you would not want to do surgery on these people. Patient again is non-compliant, would not, you know the fact that they will not be post-operatively non-weight bearing or partial weight bearing, chronic smoker I mentioned, and alcoholic abuse or chronic alcoholic. Then these patients is a disaster if you operate on them and can end up like this or even worse. Injuries, high degree of soft tissue injuries, open calcaneum fracture, again like this, you do not want to touch them initially with an open reduction. You may stabilize it, may put some wires, but no. 
If you have a very bad sand is four, where the bowler's angle is zero, almost zero, we know the fact it's more chance of secondary subtail fusion if the angle is almost zero degrees. So you do not want to operate. Surgeon factors, and I think that is the key thing, especially nothing more important but seen in calcaneum fracture. There is a significant learning curve. And again, because of the complex anatomy of the calcaneum. And these are ca challenging fractures to treat operatively. Surgical complications worse than operative treatment. And consideration should be given to either refer to experts or get some help, to, especially for your initial cases, so you can learn and then operate independently. There are certain fracture configurations which do not need surgeries, like undisplaced intra-articular or extra-articular fractures, minimally displaced extra-articular fractures, articular step is you know is hardly any there, anything. It may be comminuted, but there is no step. Anterior process calcaneum fractures where the calcaneum cuboid joint is less than 25% involvement. Now look at this fracture. You think, yes, there is a lot of comminution, but ideally you look, there is no varus valgus significant there. There is no step in the articular process. The posterior facet looks quite good, so you would want to treat them conservatively. Question is, when do you operate on this? Of course, if there is a displaced intra-articular fracture with more than two millimeter step like this one here. If you have an extra articular fracture with a substantial hind foot varus or valgus deformity, if you have an anterior process with more than 25% joint, uh, CC joint involvement, displaced calcaneum tuberosity, of course you should be operating on these. And if you have a fracture dislocation of the calcaneum, that almost becomes like an emergency. Now the thing was, when do you operate, when do you not operate, but there is another section, when do you operate in an emergency. Now patients like this where the tuberosity or the posterior tuberosity is really under the skin and it is causing almost like a pressure ulceration. These patients cannot be waited for five days, seven days or 15 days, let the swelling settle down, no. These should be operated in an emergency and treated, reduced and treated accordingly. So goals of operative treatment is, of course, to get the articular congruency, also to restore the width so you allow the patients to wear proper footwear and minima minimal, minimize subfibular impingement, restore the height because that is very important for ankle range of movement, restore the length because that is what we will give you the propulsive gait, otherwise you would get a flat foot or other deformities. So these are the reasons why you operate on these patients. Now anterior process calcaneum fractures as I have already mentioned, small piece you do not operate, large piece you may want to operate otherwise non-union is quite common. Body uh, fractures usually heal as well, except if they are in a significant deformed position. Sustenticulum tailor isolated is quite uh, uh, not common. They can be treated non-operatively, but if it's large and displaced, I think opening it up on the medial side and fixing it from the medial side makes sense. Now, just a quick thing, a recap on how do you do a patient positioning for or if of the calcaneum. I do it in a lateral position, make sure the bolster is there under the operative leg and make sure you get a good axial or a Salzman view. You should not start the surgery without getting that view where you can see the whole calcaneum, the ankle joint and the distal part of the tibia. This is how you take a broadens view, okay, if it is a cephalic beam and then you have a different rotation of 30, 40, 60 degrees and you should be able to see the posterior facet of the calcaneum. This is how you mark your incision. Again, it's a no-touch technique where only the surgeon who is operating just holds <coughs> the flap with where? with your tooth forcep and again, not the skin, usually the inside part of the skin or what you can do is you can take a number one ethylon or proline, put it through the skin and use this as a traction and over that corner area, you are straight onto the bone. Once you're onto the bone, then you try to lift the whole flap at one go. And you need to make sure you tell your scrub nurse or a brother that you would need multiple blades because these blades get blunt. Now, you need to put three, usually I put three wires, one in the fibula and one in the tailor body and the third wire anteriorly, it could be in the anterior process of the calcaneum if that's not fractured or in the cuboid if you need to fix the anterior process. You should always have a plan to go in and a plan to come out. You need to retract the lateral wall, elevate the fragments, remove the loose pieces and you need to make sure you irrigate and
prevent infection. Be one more minute, please. You need to make sure you correct all your deformities. That means you correct your heel varus. You need to restore the height and the length and restore the subtalar joint. And of course, you avoid infection. You can use your sand spin or a Steinman pin to reduce both. Get the height, correct the deformity. And again, you restore from the medial to the lateral side. So you fix it, make sure you correct the deformity. And then you put the pieces on the central fragment and then the lateral fragment and then you put wires across it and put the screws here you can see the lateral wall of the calcium has been elevated that's your elevation of the fragment sorry hold on that's the elevation of the fragment both it can be see how you can elevate the article of fragment and then you can hold it with wire passing through the tuberosity and into the tailors. And these are holding wires. Check. There is no deformities. Check broadens view. And then you can use the appropriate implant. You can use either of the plates which you can feel it is right. Closure. Yes, initially you put a drains, all knots on the outside. It's called Algo Donati or the Army, Army Navy stitch. Sinus tassi, because of time, I will not go through it. Now, just few, one or two examples. Do you operate or not? Here, hardly any displacement, extra articular. You don't need a surgery. Again, a medial process or a lateral process, get it, a CT done. If it is significantly displaced, you can put a screw, otherwise you can leave it well alone. Again, here, no significant displacement, extra-articular, don't need it. Significant depression, intra-articular, okay? And you can see how the articular surface is almost 90 degree, you would operate on them. Again, here, operate on them. So the question should be, should you operate or not? Are we asking the right question? It should be, Displaced articular fractures, would it help or not? 2002 JBGS, and they found that doing for displaced intraarticular fracture, the outcomes were significantly better in groups which were surgically treated. Also, if you have a significant displaced fracture, if you treat them appropriately, the future subtalar fusion becomes much more easier for the operating surgeon. And in Sanders 4, subtalar arthrodesis with a primary reduction may be a better option, but this is for a skillful surgeon. So in conclusion, calcaneal fracture is a life-changing event and they can cause extremely debilitating injuries. Thorough radiographic assessment needed. Operative indications must be carefully considered with particular attention to patient, injury and surgeon factors. Host and injury factors affect the choice of surgical approach. And remember what Dr. Tanna sir mentioned it, they were, do not do any harm to the patients. Thank you so much.